Today we're going to have a little look at facing point locks and mechanical points. I know not every railway has them, most railways do, but there are some uh, nascent railways out there that are just starting up and just go through a few basics. So what we have is the facing point lock mechanism itself. The lock rod, facing point lock lock rod, when this comes it will have two small notches in it, one for normal, one for reverse. And as you can appreciate, the rod has bolts that hold it to the left and right hand switch rails and also we have one side here which is insulated because we have a track circuit if you don't have insulations on your railway obviously you will need a packing piece in there now when you come set your points up you obviously set your stretcher rods to the correct length so ours don't have any packing pieces in uh, in the old days of railways there was quite a lot of washers and things used ours are set to the correct length and we have drilled these holes to match there are two on the uh, railway here one on this one on that so a front and back stretcher rod ours tend to be b or c switches you can have longer you can have very shorter ones a switch is very short um, you will notice that the insulations are both on the same side we'll try and keep all the insulations on one side and there's another important reason for that you'll notice on this front stretcher you notice that the insulation sticks out if you were to put it here it would be fouling where your drive rod comes this we call the pa the precise adjustment and on that you have a locking uh, sorry two locking nuts and two internal nuts to do uh, adjustments on that should you need to do any large adjustment that's done on the stroke crank which gains or loses stroke off the lever our points here are quite close to the box so we've lost a lot of stroke as you can appreciate it's right into the crank there um, a couple of basics if you are going to put the FPL in obviously it depends on your railway whether you need two notches cutting or one notch but what you will do when you come to set this up once you've got all your rods in place you will put your disconnect your rod so you can operate the FPL by hand you'll set your points the correct um, way that you require them so in this case we'll say we need the lock cutting on this notch you have some gauges you need you need the one and a half mil gauge. Now this is important. What you do with this one and a half mil gauge is you actually sit it between the switch rail and the stock rail. So it goes in there, close your points up. And the reason for that is, if you don't put one and a half mil in on a very hot day, obviously these switches expand forward. And when they expand forward, the first thing they will do is it will push this tight against this and you'll have no clearance at all. It will be a very tight lock. You don't want that. So one and a half mil gives you your adjustment there. Push your lock up by hand and it will bump against the bar because you haven't cut the notches out yet. You can make a mark then on the top where this rod bangs up against that bar. Then you can put your points over the other way. And when you put the points over the other way, what you will end up with is, as I mentioned, there'll be a little notch there. You'll end up with a mark on the top where you're gonna cut your FPL. And this is where your point gauge comes in. Three and a half mil, five mil. Now, you may notice there's a very slight little bit of a lip there. This is important. What's gonna happen is, if you sit this on top of your rail, you now have a mark by which you can scribe round and then cut out your hole for your facing point lock to go through. And what should happen with this, this is your clearance. So the small end, three and a half mil end, should easily go through. The five mil end should not go in. If you can get your five mil end in, you've worn the rod, either through natural process, trains, etc., wear and tear, then you need to put a new FPL rod in, because that's your, that's your go, no, go, as they used to call it, your go, no, go. So that is both your depth down and your width across. Go up to that lip. That lip is where you sit it on the rail. You'll notice the lip goes all the way across. And that gives you your mark then to cut your FPL, your facing point lock. And you'll find that as you've already got half a notch already cut out, that allows you to get your hacksaw down and your hacksaw across. So in, in reality, you'll probably take a little bit off the bottom and a chunk out, and that will give you your facing point lock notch. Um, a couple of other things to mention. Obviously, when you're gauging these points afterwards, you've had the one and a half mil in there. If you put the three and a half mil end in, you should definitely not get your lock to enter. And in the old days, we used to say, use if you could get the three and a half mil in, try the five if you if you can get the five in you sign the points out use if you can get the three and a half mil in but not the five 
you need to rectify it as soon as possible but that depends on your how your railway standards are are run if you decide to sign it in for another week or two or decide to sign it straight out we just use a one and a half and a three and uh, one and a half and three and a half now a couple of other things that are very important this gauge comes in multiple uses we don't have back drives on our railway but the five mil gauge should be able to go in at the back stretcher so here's our back stretcher on UIC 54 you want that clearance of 50 mil that's 50 mil on RT 60 you want at least 60 mil again these are standards that uh, Network Rail is starting to uh, to use quite a lot of um, they have a gauging system where you can set every stretcher up correctly and there are drilling dimensions for setting these up one other thing you want you do want a little bit of clearance at your back especially if you have um, uh, back drives you don't want these hard up so there's a little bit of a gap there no more than certainly no more than four mil four mil is just two slats that's three and a half five is just it's banged in and that again depends on the setup of your points and the type of points you have you tend not to have back drives on anything over uh, oh sorry under a b because uh, they're just unmanageable because the, the the way the points are set up the openings are too large um you want a nominal 100 and 508 opening on your front but that's going into specifications for points one thing i will mention as well we have detectors here i'll just briefly mention the detectors these are switch extension pieces they are handed so you have a right hand and a left hand they're designed so that when the point's up this doesn't jam into the web of the rail as it's cut out as you can see so you need to get them right also they have four holes in so that you can physically stand one further out than the other you'll notice this one its rod is on the outside the next one is the FPL and the next one after that is the left hand rod so you can stand one further out this one will be stood further out as you can tell there's this there's a hole showing itself up there um, a couple of other things because I've mentioned that we have track circuiting here so on this side we have some insulations could have been placed on that side really to match the other rods we also have an insulated sole plate here and the insulations for these are ferrules like this the ones that go through the point here the ferrule sits inside the bush sits on that and then we have a metal washer and then our locking nuts now when you come to adjust these points at the future you are allowed to put a shim in if you're going to put a shim in on that side there's no problem there's no insulations and all you do is you loosen these two bolts here on the lock stretcher you will have to loosen these two because they're so close to this it holds the switch and then you can drop a shim down now as you'll notice there's already a shim in here that's an alignment plate that's a shim so there's a shim been dropped in there and the shim is just simply it's shaped with a hole there and a hole there so that you can angle it in and then tap it down and it clears the two bolts but what you need to be careful of is if you come to shim this side the shims need must go against the rail they must never go here because if they go here against this plate which is also an insulated plate it will burst through this washer when you put that shim down it will just carve straight through it and put a short on you don't want that so as you can appreciate if that's our ferrule there as you can see the plate at the back is now clear of that ferrule looking at the detector very quickly three adjustable rods far switch FPL locked and near switch and the floating base is designed so you can have multiple detectors on but you need to be aware to cut from outside to inside when you're making your notches because what you don't want is to cut this one here and then when you put the points over the hole lines up with your next detector when it shouldn't do so as you can appreciate holes are cut here and line up into there obviously we don't have another detector here so that doesn't matter um, your notches in these again easy enough once you've cut these um, you want a two mil clearance down either side so we have a two mil gauge for that that we can use and going back to our point gauge another thing that we can do with our point gauge Get the right one here that's a two mil point gauge so we have a gap down here two mil that's no problem that's on our locking face so that point is up there on that rail so 
this detector on this side is this is its locking face good two mil our five mil again should not enter now you can put that between the switch rail close it up and check your detector but I'm not moving the points here today so I'm just show, using this to show you that's how we do it again one important thing is your detector should always go back onto this stop here this stud if it doesn't the notch in here will foul these blades here so you won't be able to put the points over and finally tie your detector to your front sole plate or your stock rail so that your detector moves with expansion and contraction as do your points having a quick look at the facing point lock you can appreciate there's a cover I'll just mention in a minute the there is a set distance that the bar drives through and also that it uh, comes back from the face you don't want it to sit too close to the face because on a hot day it could expand in and jam up another thing you want to watch out for you see how that's beautifully in the middle there on a hot day that could expand and jam up against your facing point lock making it a real nightmare to unlock or move your points we do have adjustment which is here so we've got plenty of adjustment on there that's driven off our FPL crank which as you can appreciate has a larger arm on one side than the other and also has our drop down to get us under the rail here these are handed so depending on which side your rodding comes in on you have to get the right one for the right side and you'll notice it's set completely against that side so it's as close up to that rail as possible to get your drive rod in the perfect line in the middle the kicker has an extension plate on if you when you're cutting your rods you find that the rod doesn't line up and this needs to be longer you've got the rod in the wrong position I've made this mistake myself and end up making long ones of these to get round problems um, but this this rod is a fixed length so that defines which one the, is the FPL one um, the kicker is kicked over obviously as you unlock and lock the facing point lock and that uh, drives your mechanical or electrical detection again insulated bushes and one thing I will mention as well as insulated bushes on the switch extension pieces as well these are rubber the detector cover quite important you get this right because this has been gone wrong by people in the past and what happens is if they put it the wrong way around it actually it jams the kicker from coming undone you can move the points but you won't be able to move the kicker and you'll end up with the detection fault so it goes on with the back legs underneath that this then lines up and when it's in place all you do gently and it snips down locked in place here we have some lorry tire markers which we use once we've tightened our nuts to just make sure nothing's moved afterwards one thing to watch out for as well is wear on the inside of rails lipping can be a bit a bit of a problem so just keep an eye out for lipping there and the breaking off on the nibs on point blades as well this is quite a good point blade no wear and tear on that at all the numbers we always put the numbers on the normal side good practice because if you send someone out from the p-way or someone to pump a set of points uh, motorized points they need to know which way is normal so in this case 15 alpha points the bravo end is right up there and this is our normal side so we know when that switches up that is our normal 